Taurus, hello and welcome to your weekly reading for the week of September 15th through to the 21st. Let's dive right in. So there are lots of horrific things going on in the world and I believe that it does beg the question of what we can do for ourselves because in the most immediate sense, if we have outlying issues, if we have conflicts within us that we haven't yet come to ask for help and support from, within our community or we haven't found our voice to take a stand for ourselves, what we believe in that continues to perpetuate so the high priestess with the four of earth is just saying to use your foundation as a way to intuit what's coming next if your foundation feels unstable do what you can to allocate your time energy community to finding you stability to helping you to reinforce your gifts your skills perhaps you belong at a farmer's market perhaps you belong yes you have to make a choice perhaps you belong with more support in your life and living with or around people who can share the some of the load that you guys have you go from the four to the six so there is definitely a glow up in this week of you guys coming into agreement or accordance with what you need to feel physically sustained and what you want to happen. And that six of earth is saying that you're more receptive to it. And whether there were specific reasons why you felt kind of um, inhibited or afraid of asking for help, maybe you were seeing someone who was very negative and they, they wanted to control you. So in doing so, they iced you out from your friends or community, from people who wanted to, the best for you. We have the moon card. And this week, Taurus, there is a partial lunar eclipse happening in your 11th house. So there will be things dropping out of your life like flies. The dead stuff has got to go. If it was not vibrating you higher with Uranus in your sign, it's over. And it's going to be for the best. So for those of you guys who needed to know why, it's just that some people don't sign up for the same level of ascension as you in this life. And Sometimes those people who block us in a way or inhibit our expression are our best teachers and they come through in a way that no one else could because they got so close to our heart and we were able to very clearly see how we give our power away or what we give our power away to. So for the four of earth, practical advice, your most precious talents are those that are the most useful. They will benefit you most by helping you to fulfill your desires and to let go of your fears. Sometimes it's better to clearly draw the line and to emphasize your uniqueness, but sometimes it's better to improve your communicative abilities and to include as many people as possible into your endeavors. Again, farmer's market is coming in very clutch for you all Taurus as an opportunity to get um, integrated into your community, see what is actually needed from and for you to grow the most. So the moon that came up next, the practical advice is accept your intense emotions as a reality that wants to be lived just like any other aspect of your being. Then you may safely swim about in the deep waters of your psyche, be at peace with yourself in the world, open your heart and cease to be self-absorbed. So there might be a tendency with that four of earth and the moon to kind of stay in a rut emotionally and Virgo season as your fifth house is wanting to break you through, carry you through to that next rung of existence of the expansion of your heart with your childhood projects, maybe parts of you that in childhood you would be so proud of yourself right now if you could see that. Um, also maybe with children, maybe you've had a lot of big eruptions around your 11th house and your fifth house, your social circle and your romantic life and things can get a little bit clearer um, this week as far as how you communicate your needs or how you communicate what you experience maybe you have to write it into a book i was just reading about some really tremendously disappointing human stuff and um, there was a woman who um, was abused like very it's dramatic i don't want to go into it but they said this this woman she said shame has got to change sides so for those of you guys who feel ashamed or you feel really let down or really disappointed by someone in your life just trust that if that fits for you if shame has to change sides for you it's a matter of how you go about letting your heart open up to speaking your truth to sharing it with the world to being 
that voice that maybe so many other people have had the same experience, but no one has taken the time to write it out, to, to speak about it, and then to ask for support in a way that is very harrowing. It's going to be very true and heroic in that way and groundbreaking. It's going to define you in ways that will level you up and lift you up out of whatever rut you might be in. With the six of earth, practical advice, new ways of realizing your own needs and of understanding the needs of others are called for. Learn to distinguish productive from unproductive needs. The value of that which you own is greatest when as many as people, as many people as possible benefit from it. In this sense, you own only that which you give away. Focus upon realizing a gain for all parties involved. This is much better than managing deprivation. So I want to get in closer into this card. Productive needs. The three figures represent different aspects of giving and taking. Whenever the coins are receiving, as far as taking, because in order to receive something, you have to take it in first, right? Whenever coins are spent to satisfy real needs, both parties involved win. The one spending the coins as well as the one receiving them. Do not waste your time giving alms or appealing to someone's charity. Much more is needed here. The figure on the right has a halo around their head. Again, Dali can be credited with emphasizing the divine dimension. See the three of coins, four of coins, ten of wands. Whenever giving and taking become one, whenever strengths and weaknesses are reconciled, a divine blessing can be felt. This benediction is represented by the sketchily drawn figure with the raised arms in the background. Inside this hazy apparition, a red chalice or a glass with red wine and a tablet with eight rolls of dough can be seen. Hmm. Oh, that's, that's kind of in the far back. These items symbolize the Christian concepts of transmutation. Bread and wine provide physical as well as spiritual nourishment. Whenever you use your talents to satisfy your needs and use your needs to stimulate your talents, there's always something to be gained. Both aspects will benefit by the results, a true win-win. In this manner, you can transform plain wants and banal necessities through blessed creative acts. And that adds a little bit more magic and sparkle to our life, which as the sun is moving through that for you all, the magic and sparkle of your daily life, you will have the opportunity to understand and really clearly address with Uranus in your sign what needs that innovation, what needs that brush of genius applied to it. The Two of Swords is absolutely saying to Make a decision. Let's see what the practical advice is. Do not become entrenched in uncertainty. Do not pretend to be blind or to not understand. Expand your horizons. Search within to grow beyond yourself. All right, the new insights, which this could be the very well the scroll or the book I mentioned that you all have to write or the printing of what the high priestess has to say, which is the part of you that knows. So don't pretend to be naive at this point. You got the high priestess with the Hathor slash moon on her head and a 25 degree partial lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces. I was just doing Capricorn's reading and funny enough, Sade, I mentioned that she's someone to listen to. She's a 25 degree Capricorn sun. So she's absolutely someone to listen to this week to put you into the mood of that liberation that trust of life, that vision of the horizon and new horizons for you, Taurus. New insights. This card shows that your thoughts and your discerning powers are in the process of transcending your previous limits. The moon at the top of the card represents the cycles of life. Oh, there's this like moon here too. The bull in the lower part of the picture stands for your physicality, for your moods, irritability, as well as your sense of security and tranquility. Subtle sentiments and unexpressed needs demand your attention. Unvoiced desires and fears await a response. And yet, those louder and more insistent opinions and intentions are in no less need of a closer scrutiny. You need to use the weapons of your mind, thinking, knowing, and discerning to probe your emotions and wants. The blindfold warns against a lack of attention or inadequate mental vigilance, which I think has come to the surface. You all know by now, and any else that would, would be arising would be in the same vein of what you were blatantly ignoring at this point. And yet the blindfolded eyes also represent impartiality and the transition to a more spiritual vision which this partial lunar eclipse will be giving. The frontiers of the realm of the mind within which your current questions are focused 
are to be found beyond the concrete and the obvious. The body of the bowl contains drawings of several little boats depicting a voyage or a maritime battle, perhaps. If you consider the bowl, the picture of a saint at the center of the picture and the moon above as representing the sum total of a human being, you will note down below in the realm of the unconscious or in the lower abdomen, there is growing unrest. Little boats move to and fro in the waves. In the middle region, the realm of the normal waking consciousness, everything is clearly defined but also rather rigid. Noble aims and ideals represented by the moon float overhead. The challenge is to penetrate new spaces with the weapons of your mind and to shed the light of consciousness on all aspects of your personality. Cool. Let's see what the angels have to say. What does Taurus need to know for this week, angels? Hmm. Two of water, a relationship that continues to grow closer forgiveness, the positive resolution of a conflict. So if these two swords can be embraced as two different perspectives, we can have emotional clarity and maybe that um, so spiritual, because I sense the bull being by the feet and not just the abdomen, even though it's kind of their, their waist is tied with a belt. It's like you're, you're in your soul. You know that there's a better answer. There's a better way to address maybe some issues that have come up, um, maybe in claiming your right to move on from whatever has been bothering you. You have the flame at the bottom of this deck, which I shuffled it before. So it's speaking to lighting a candle as you go about your work, as you set about your day to get some work done, use bay leaves, use cinnamon on your altar. And you have Eros, which is an acronym for the word rose. I found that out by reading this deck. So there is a touch of the sensual, which is why Sade is coming in. Let's see what they have to say, too. You were the only one. Love is a gun. I know that. And Okay, arrows. Love is desire, eroticism, and sensuality. And I love that this is coming up with the moon for me. And that glyph of cancer with Mars there. Though Eros can be depicted as unbridled sexuality and eroticism, a more contemplative understanding of this archetypal energy leads us to the root of desire itself. What do we long for? Why are we awakened by love? What makes us hesitate in the face of intimacy? Eros reconnects us with the primal longing to merge with another human being, nature, music, art, plants, food, or anything that we perceive we are separate from. Eros allows us to momentarily unite. Our heart embraces otherness, and in doing so, we further understand our own. Our life force awakens. This card reveals an inevitable initiation into love labyrinth. You may find yourself swirling in a new territory of desire and sensuality. Explore the labyrinth with a curious and honest heart. And remember, though the way is circuitous, you are always being led towards its center. I would say that this is huge with um, my study now of the moon and the lunar cycles. And just that we're coming into this partial lunar eclipse where it feels like you're going to be cutting off any... Um, is it being like naive or just not looking at the details and kind of just being like whatever it doesn't matter as far as certain aspects of your life have gone and your social circle and your romantic romantic creative projects so Taurus you guys are going to have to keep me posted Uranus this week um, will move back to 27 degrees and six seconds so that's a four second change so it's like within this Uranian energy, you guys are clicking into gear and looking. It's like, it's, it's inevitable. You're just gonna see very clearly what is coming up for you to allow to be something that helps you to get very clear about why you do what you do and to do it better than you've ever done it before. So Taurus, thank you so much for tuning in. For those of you all just watching this for the Taurus reading, go on ahead, subscribe, hit that like button and the bell so you're notified. Watch your other readings for your moon and rising sign. Send one of my readings to a loved one. I'm so happy that you're here. And my subscribers, thank you guys. You mean the world to me. It means so much 
leave me a comment let me know how things are going for you and if you all haven't noticed i've started making shorter versions of these i take two of the cards that speak the loudest to me and i make a very quick blip for someone who's just tapping into the world of astrology and is welcome here so see you guys in <laughs> see you guys next week and until then aloha